Hello, welcome to Women's Financial Empowerment Group. I'm your host, Ruth Agbeloso. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. If this is your first time, please go ahead and subscribe, like this video, and share it with your friends. If you've been here before, thank you so much for your support. Please go ahead and like, share, do all those wonderful things, and hit the notification bell. That way you'll know whenever I upload a new video. On this channel, I discuss all things money, money mindset, making money, saving money, investing money, and more. So you're going to want to come back over and over to hear what I have in store for you. If you want to know more about me and what I do, stay with me to the end of the video and I'll share that information with you. Are you an entrepreneur looking to scale your business so that you'll make more money? Well, I have a wonderful, amazing opportunity for you. Myron Golden's Make More Offers Challenge. This bootcamp is designed to teach you how to create more offers and transform your mindset so that it almost guarantees success. Whether you're new to business or a seasoned pro, this challenge will take your business to the next level. Personally, this challenge has changed my life immensely, not only my personal life, but also my business. And I want you to experience the same transformation. If you're ready to make more money in your business and achieve the success that you deserve, click the link in the description and sign up for the Make More Offers Challenge. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity. Sign up for the Make More Offers Challenge today. So let's get into today's video. Today, we're going to be talking about career development, and we have a special guest on with us today. We have the CEO and founder of Mentor Me, a professional development company for women, and her name is Ashley A. Adams. So let's welcome Ashley A. Adams to Women's Financial Empowerment Group. Hi, Ashley. Welcome. It's so great to have you here. Hey, Ruth. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so thrilled to share my expertise with your community. Awesome. I just told our viewers your name and the name of your company, but that's it because I wanted to leave the juicy stuff for you. So go ahead and tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yes, of course. Hi, all. I'm Ashley. I'm the lead mentor with Mentor Me, um, a professional development company for high achieving professional women. My job is to help women like you make more money and have more impact in their career. Mentor Me um, has been in development, um, serving women um, across many different fields over the last four years. And in that time, we've helped High achieving professional women earn more than $1.5 million in salary increases, raises, and bonuses. And we are not done yet. The goal is to hit um, over $2 million this year. Um, and we do that through um, executive coaching, career coaching, and um, speaking engagements um, in collaborations with corporations and private companies to help women have the skills to be able to advance their careers in meaningful ways. Awesome. Big stuff. Oh my gosh. That is so impressive. So let's get right into the meat of this. What is the number one problem that you're seeing when it comes to women in careers right now? Sure. Well, I would say that the, the number one problem or challenge that, you know, professional women are facing in the world of work today is just the actual world of work. <laughs> Um, you know, the world of work, um, you know, was not structured um, and does not serve women well. Uh, we still very much in a very patriarchal society that uh, prioritizes uh, men and men, men identified people and the needs of men and men, men identified people, which means that, um, you know, women and women identified people are marginalized and that marginalization continues when we start to, um, you know, think about race and ability um, mm. and other identity markers. Um, and so I think that there's lots that, you know, the world of work needs to catch up on as it relates to flexible work environments and, um, you know, paid uh, family leave and um, just it, how it views leaders and leadership in the workplace. Um, so I, I never want to kind of like put the, the burden of the world of work at the feet of women. But I think that women absolutely do have agency, right? So it's it's not that we don't have agency, like we can't drive change, like we're not getting things done. I think that um, when it comes to 
that piece, I think that I'd like to see more women really understanding what their values are and building value-led careers, just making sure that they're making decisions that honor their values, um, that center their values, and they're working for organizations that are aligned with their values. That ensures that they're being paid at the level that they should, that they're not being overworked and underpaid, and that they're able to provide their expertise at an organization that sees um, their value. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Awesome. So you mentioned a few things that I wanted to touch on. The first being marginalized. Can you tell me one way that you feel like women are being marginalized in the career fields? Sure. I think the primary way is around leadership, right? So you know, I think that the the most popular vision, uh, if you will, of leadership is that it has to be someone who is confrontational and abrasive and direct. And these attributes often bring up imagery of like angry white men. <laughs> um, and so I think that the way that many women, right, may lead, unfortunately, is mimicking some of these behaviors. And they're not good behaviors. They're bad behaviors. You should not have to be loud and abrasive and aggressive in the workplace. There's an opportunity for you with grace and thoughtfulness and consideration and kindness to be a leader, right? And I think that the more women can do to like honor thoughtfulness and kindness and collaboration and their approach to leadership, absolutely being leaders, absolutely providing direction, absolutely providing a vision, absolutely, you know, holding people accountable and driving action, but it doesn't have to be in this like super abrasive uh, or, you know, angry or totalitarian way. Um, I think that that's leadership of the past. That's this charismatic leadership. That's <laughs> what I'm done with. I think that moreover, we need to be leading with data. We need to be leading with empathy. We need to be leading in, in a way that's compassionate. And that approach can still drive action and drive results in organizations. I think you brought out some really excellent points. And the number one thing that stood out to me is that we don't have to mimic men to be great leaders. Period. Right? We can be great leaders in our own right with our own skills, our own talents, and our know-how and all of that stuff. So I love that you pointed all of that out because I think that's something that a lot of women need to hear. Now, the next point that you mentioned in the beginning is pay. And I know one of the things that I do in my program is to teach women how to use what they already have, because that works in some cases, to make more money as opposed to maybe trying to find money other places, but using what they already have. And I believe that that's something that you do in your business by teaching women how to make more money in their jobs. So can you just share with us like one of the ways that you help women make more money in their jobs, in their careers that they're currently doing? Sure. One of the things that I often am concerned about is the over-credentialing of women, particularly Black women, right? Society has maybe told you that or you're not enough, you're not good enough, the degrees... Um, years of experience, certificates that you already have just aren't going to cut it. You need more, 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 right? Yes. And so women are going out and, you know, taking all these certificate classes and spending $60,000 on another master's mm -hmm. degree and, you know, doing all of this stuff to try to prove industry mm -hmm. leaders that they're valuable when they, the skills, knowledge, talent, um, years of experience, expertise that they already have are likely being underutilized and undervalued in the marketplace. So a big part of my work is helping high achieving professional women use what they already have to get what they want, right? You don't need another degree. You don't need another credential. You don't need another certification. What, what we really want to focus on is how to use the ones you already have and position the value, position your skill set as valuable using that. I think sometimes we're kind of credential first when we need to be result first, right? Here's the results I've driven across the course of my career. Here are the outcomes that I drive across the course of my career. Here are the problems that I solve within organizations across the course of my career. And it doesn't matter if you just have that bachelor's degree, if you've got two master's degrees, organizations have existing problems and they're really looking to hire professionals who have demonstrated their ability to solve those problems. And so a big part of my work is helping women do some inventory on the skills, knowledge, talent, expertise, degrees, credentials, certifications that they already have that are packaging those in a way that's going to make employers take notice and then taking those to an employers and saying, here's the problem that I can solve. And here's the salary that I will command, right, that I that I expect 
um, to solve this problem in your organization. I love that. Thank you. (laughs) I love that. You are empowering these women to take charge of their finances. That's what I teach. And I love to hear that Mm because what I am seeing a lot of times just like you mentioned, women are overqualified in terms of all the degrees that they have, all the certificates, but a lot of times they just end up having all this debt related to the education that they got, but they're not being compensated for all of that. And learning how to be able to say, hey, this is what I'm able to do. This is what I can bring to your company is really vital. So I love that you are teaching women how to do that because unfortunately, I feel like with a lot of women that I work with, they kind of cow down, kind of, you know, they push the degree more because they feel like that's what's going to give them what they need. But unfortunately, everybody's getting the degrees. So that's not really cutting it like they told us it would, right? They told us, get a master's. You know, first it was, oh, get an associate's, then get a bachelor's, then get a master's. It's like, when will it stop? You're not going to get, you're not going to be a doctor. And even if you do decide you're going to be a doctor, they, it's still like, like, oh, you got more and more. So I'm glad that you pointed that out because a lot of women out there are really struggling to really see where they fit when it comes to advancement in their jobs. So I think I'd love for you to touch on a little bit about advancement and how can a woman really achieve that in their business, especially when it seems like there's a glass ceiling. Sure. So the number one strategy that I like to talk to high achieving women about when it comes to career advancement is their ability to manage up, right? So you really need to be able to manage your manager, your supervisor, your boss. Um, And there's a three-part framework to managing up that I like to talk to women about. So number one is that we need to know and understand our supervisor. This doesn't mean that you have to know like, you know, what their favorite color is or, you know, what (laughs) you know, a pedigree their dog is, but you really need to understand what kind of leader are they? Are they an influencer boss? Are they making all their decisions based on the influence of the larger organization? Are they a data-driven boss? Are they like, you know, what's the data on this? You know, what do the numbers say? You know, what, like, is that the kind of way that they make informed decisions? Are they a big picture boss? Do they just want to know the vision, you know, the roadmap? Do they just need a one pager and that's going to drive them forward? Understanding the archetype or your boss's approach will help you be able to manage them in a way that's going to help you have influence over them and the way that um, they make decisions, thus how they, you know, see you as a leader and make decisions through you. So number one, it's, you know, managing up is really understanding who your supervisor is. From there, you want to be clear and get from them Um, What are your expectations of me? What does excellent work in this organization look like? This is critical because too often, you know, you're just going about your day, going about your work, you know, doing whatever it is that you think you need to do. And you could an annual review or mid-year review from your boss. And they're like, that's not the priority. You shouldn't be doing this. I wanted you to do this. Or yeah, that's great, but it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things. And then you feel undervalued and frustrated, but you never really checked in to say like, hey, here's what I'm doing. Is this aligned with your expectations? Mm -hmm. Hey, here's what I'm doing. Is this, is this the caliber of work that you expect from me, right? We want to we want to invite our leaders into that uh, conversation before the annual review time to ask them, um, what does exceptional work look like in this organization so I can be producing exceptional work all the time and we have a shared understanding of what that is. Once we have those two things figured out, then it's all about saying, here's what I need from you to meet those expectations. I know what kind of leader you are. I understand what exceptional work looks like. And here's what I'm going to need from you to meet this exceptional expectation. I'm going to need a higher salary because the scope of this work is outside of my initial scope. I'm going to need some support staff because I need to be able to delegate to a team member. I'm going to need release time on Thursdays because, you know, I need to be able to, you know, talk to our partner organization, like whatever that is, you want to make clear to your supervisor what other things you might need to really be successful in the role long term. That's going to make sure that there's mutual understanding across the organization. And then you follow up 30 days, 90 days, six months, a year. Hey, here's, I'm hitting these three milestones in the next quarter. Is that aligned with your expectations? You can expect a, you know, bi-weekly update from me. Or, hey, here's my priorities over the next six months. Is this aligned with your expectation? Yes, it is. Great. Here's what need from you to be successful. No, it's not. What other things would you like me to bring on? And the last thing I'll say about this is that when it comes to advancement, oftentimes we're falling into the terrible mentality of you have to do more with less. 
well, you know, I just got to hunker down. They said they don't really have any money to help me. They don't mm. like, no, 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 no. We are not doing more with less, not in this economy, right? <laughs> in this economy, we need to say, you know, thanks so much for that feedback. You know, need me to take on this additional project. What would you like me to take off my plate so I can prioritize what you're sharing today? right? What would you like me to stop doing, right? Because I'm not going to be doing less with more. And I'm certainly not going to be doing more without additional compensation. So having that challenging conversation really will help you advance without feeling burnt out or resentful. Wow. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. You. You, <laughs> I want to comment on the last thing you talked about first, when it comes to burnout, women are suffering from burnout because they are overworking and you mentioned doing more with less and that is definitely an issue because a lot of women they're going to their supervisors or bosses and saying I need this and they're being told well we don't have that or whatever and then they feel like they still have to do all the things to Mm -hmm. prove their worth and all this and it just burns them out so I'm glad that you point that out Also, I love that framework of just being proactive, you know, making sure you know who do you report with, report to, which everybody usually knows, but actually knowing that person and what their expectations are, how they move, right? And then also making sure that you know what it is that is expected of you and being super clear on that and also communicating to them what you will be doing to make sure that it's in line with what they want. And then of course, the last one we already talked about, you know, making sure that you have what you need to get it done. So I love that framework because I feel that that sets up women for success when it comes to advancement. And I think what the issue that I'm seeing a lot of times is because some women, they have a hard time approaching the idea of advancement or even getting a raise, simply getting a raise because again, they don't have all the data, you know, they don't have um, that confidence. So that's another thing that, that they need to have and they don't have that. So all of these things that they're missing before they go through. And I feel like with your framework, it really addresses that stuff because then they'll be more prepared, not only for advancement, but also even to ask for a raise. So like you can ask for a raise once you know that you've done the things that are expected from you. So I, I love, love, love that framework. And, you know, I mentioned getting a raise. And that is, <laughs> like I said, that has been a challenge for a lot of people that I meet. So, you know, if you could just share real quick, you know, just how do you start the process with getting a raise? Yeah. So Ruth, you hit the nail on the head earlier when you talked about the fact that in order to garner a raise from your supervisor, from your manager, from your organization, you need to be already meeting and or exceeding expectations, right? So no one's giving a raise to poor performers. Uh, You have to be meeting or exceeding current expectations, right? So if you, and that's a quick assessment, you know whether or not you're meeting or exceeding expectations, right? Evaluate that in your head. If you, and that should be a quick decision, like, yes, I'm meeting expectations or exceeding expectations or no, I'm not. Um, If you are meeting or exceeding expectations, then typically um, I recommend that you ask for a raise at the point in which you are 20% or more out of scope of your current job. So let's just say that your job is filing, answering calls in the front desk, right? And, And that's these three things, right? But recently you've been asked to take out the trash and wash the windows, right? I know this is no one's job today. I'm just saying, you need you need to make sure that 20% of the things that you're doing right now are out of scope of your original job description. Your original job description was those three things. Now they've added two more things. That means it's time for a raise. So 20% more than what your current job description is equates an, a, a reasonable ask for a raise. So the way that you ask for a raise, um, I'm gonna talk, start with what you don't ask. So you don't need to say, you know, I got, you know, we're having another baby. So I need to ask for a raise. You don't need to say, well, inflation has gone up, um, you know, so I need a raise. You don't need to say, I think so-and-so is making more than me, so I should get a raise, right? None of this is a way to approach a raise. Your (laughs) raise and your request for a raise should be based on the scope of work that you are currently doing and how that is 20% or more greater than your written job description, because that's going to trigger that you are um, out of scope of your current job description and should, you know, receive an equity bonus. So if that's the case, then you simply say, you know, based on my skill set my and the value that I'm adding to this organization, particularly around points A and B that are not part of my current scope of work, 
compensation at a level of X would more appropriately compensate me at this time, right? And then you be quiet. One of the things that I often see is that women talk themselves out of the race. It's like, just say, my current scope of work has grown such that I'm now 20% out of scope of my original um, role. This additional, um, you know, uh, scope of work adds significant contributions to the organization and should be compensate at, compensated at a rate of blank and then stop talking, right? That gives you the opportunity to be very clear with the leader that I'm adding value at a higher level and should be compensated as such. Now it's in the ball, it's in the court of the employer to decide if they agree and if they want to compensate you for that. I will tell you that on average, about 70% of my mentees either get a yes, absolutely, you're right, we'll compensate you or no, but no, we can't do that, but we can do this, right? You know, 70% of the time you're going to get a yes or a no, but. Um, which is good because you're going to get something, right? I will say 30% of the time when my mentees are, you know, advocating for a raise, they will hear a no. But I always tell them that it doesn't really matter what the answer is. All of the answers are information, right? So if you get a yes, great. This organization values you. They take your feedback seriously and they are trying to keep you great. You can decide if you want to keep working there or if you want to say, man, now I see what my value is. I'm going to actually take this number and go somewhere else, right? <laughs> you get a no, but maybe they are not able to do that. But they can give you a more hybrid schedule. You know, maybe they can't do that, but they're going to add an additional team member to take some other work off of you. No, no, they can't give you a raise, but they're going to they're going to do something else, right? It's a no, but, right? That means that the organization is it's, it maybe does value value you, doesn't have the capital to give you the raise, but is thinking about some other ways to leverage you, right? You can decide, great, I'm glad they see me. It was a no this time, but maybe I'll ask next time. I'm going to stay with this organization or no, the money was at the top of my value list. I can't stay here. I'm out, right? Uh, Or if you get a no, but you can say, you know what, this organization doesn't see my value. I've got to go elsewhere. Or if you get a no, you could decide that, you know, I want to stay here for what reason I don't know, but you could decide that, right? (laughs) But and whatever the answer is, it's information and it helps you make an informed decision. You What you don't want to do is not ask, right? What you don't want to do is be like, well, I don't know. I don't think they're going to give it to me. You know, they don't give raises. Like you, you will come up with a million excuses about why you're not advocating for yourself, which means that you don't have the information you need to make an informed decision, to make the ask, get the information. I love that. I love that. I love that. (laughs) You're not going to get anything if you don't ask. And most employers are not going to be like, hey, you get a raise. I mean, from time to time, some places give a raise. But is it the raise you really deserve? That's that's the question. You know, a quarter may not be what you deserve. It may just be, oh, we give a raise. Um, So I love that because women just in general need to speak up more in a way that they're really advocating for themselves and not cowing down when you know, there's some opposition or some question about their performance or anything like that. So thank you so much for sharing all of that. This has been a wonderful conversation. And I'd just like to wrap up with you just giving one piece of advice to our listeners who want to, you know, just have better prospects out there, want to do better with representing themselves in the workplace. Just one last thought. Yeah, my last thought would be is that you don't have to do it alone, right? So often high achieving professional women are high achieving professional women because they've had to put, you know, the whole family, their entire community, maybe their entire race on their back. They feel like their work um, is representative of everything that is um, meaningful and, you know, they can't get any help. No one understands them. They have to go at it alone. That is often um, the burden of women who either have asked for help before and people have not come through to them or women who are struggling with an ego issue because they think that if they don't do it, can't nobody do it well, right? Right. I want to release you of that, sis. I'm talking to you, sis. I'm talking and looking directly at you. I want to release you of this idea that you have to go at it alone. There is help available for you and to you. And if you need career development support, if you're looking to make more money and have more impact in your career, I'm here to serve you. You do not have to go at it alone. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And lastly, if you could just share real quick how my audience can get in touch with you. I know a lot of women want to advance themselves and do all that stuff. So please share how they can reach you or follow you. 
Yes, of course. You can learn more about me and my work right on my website at mentor-me.org. That's M-E-N-T-O-R-Me.org. Mentor-me.org. It's a great way to stay connected with me right on my website. I'm also on social media. Instagram is Ashley Ashire. That's Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y, Ashire, A-S-S-H-I-R-E. Follow me on Instagram. That's a great way to stay connected with me. I go live very often. I'm sharing lots of great strategy to help you um, advance your career in meaningful ways. And I'm accepting new mentees right now. So if you're excited about an opportunity to work closely with me to help you secure at least a minimum of a $30,000 salary increase over the next three months, I am accepting new mentees right now. Um, you can schedule a call with me to learn more about those mentorship programs and to get access to them um, right on my website website again at mentor-me.org. Awesome. And I will definitely have your information in the description box. So all of you watching, sis, you watching this, you'll see the description for her information. Thank you so much again, Ashley, for taking out the time. I know you're super busy, but you <laughs> took out time to speak to us today. And I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for coming on the channel today. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And there you have it, folks. That was Ashley. I hope you got a lot of gems from what she shared today. If you're in a position where you want to advance in your career, definitely, I hope you took notes and I hope you reach out to her if need be. Thank you so much for watching this video. I did tell you I would share about what I do at the end of this video. I help high achieving moms build wealth and leave a legacy by managing their money better. So if you have money that you want to manage better, go ahead and see my information in the description box. And there is a link there where you can schedule a free call with me to see where you are in your financial journey and how we can fill in the gaps to get you where you want to be in your financial journey. Thank you so much again for watching. And remember, change your mind, change your pocketbook. See you in the next video.